Okay, part H of Introduction to Cloud Computing and Big Data Slash Data Engineering. And uh, in this um, set of slides, we'll start discussing uh, uh, the cloud infrastructure around the world. Okay, this uh, cloud infrastructure section is always a nice one for me, or uh, it's a less than other section. Because I'm just so impressed by the sizes of clouds. They're so big. And so we comment on these side trends, which especially stress size. Because it's just so remarkable that they can be this big this quickly. There were nothing in 2008. And most people struggle to do a little bit between 2000, I mean, the 10 years from 2008. But clouds have just become a monstrosity. It's amazing. We can't look at these trends in the data center, data center technologies, how they spread throughout the world. So little side remarks on green computing and power and things like that. And then we look at just the amount of data, the amount of clouds, the amount of networks, and, the, and things like that, coming largely from a pretty interesting new analysis white paper from Cisco, which is actually more, more um, Easier to, to interpret than previous ones in this field. So here we are, cloud infrastructure, it's a big. Yeah. Okay, so here are some comments from Gartner. Um, namely, the battle for supremacy among providers of servers for public and private clouds is intensifying, that's Intel and so on. And as more and more people want to provide Effective cloud strategy. And remember, clouds are going up 20%. Mainstream infrastructure is going down 3%. Um, and then there are all these various tools that make clouds easier to do. And so they're trying. People are obviously trying to bundle, bundle that in. You bundle in Docker and Kubernetes or OpenStack support. Um, so server vendors must. Because of the 20% and minus 3% numbers, must understand cloud computing. Uh, some of them will even offer their own services. Intel is not offering cloud services, but uh, other uh, people are, like IBM is offering cloud services. Previously, it used to build computers. Um, typically, you will sell server infrastructure, but then it has to be reasonably diverse. And uh, you have to have good margins or acceptable margins and good technology. Um, and of course, others will uh, use clouds to make their operations efficient. So here is some amusing predictions. By 2020, anything other than a cloud only strategy for a new IT initiative will require justification of more than 30% of large enterprises. By 2018, 50% of the applications hosted in the clouds will be mission critical. So that people are going to put their really important applications in the cloud. By 2021, more than half of the enterprises you can use cloud today, which is not all enterprises will adopt an all in the cloud strategy. So 100% cloud is on the way. <coughs> There's a technology for checking containers are vulnerable and they need by checking actually that their applications um, pass scans or on a so-called whitelist, they will uh, that will increase. That's this whitelisted lockdown approach. And um, you will have deactivate the very expensive anti-malware scanning, which instead of certifying good things, you look for bad things. Certifying good things is much, much more effective. This is an important one, because currently containers are viewed as less secure than virtual machines. And here it's saying by 2019, 90% will consider containers as secure as virtual machines. Currently, it's only 20%. Now, you got to, we still need to find the right OS. Which version of Linux, stripped down Linux, or ordinary Linux is, is, used, is uh, to be used? 
Here's this, uh, again, an antivirus comment. And this is an amusing one. Security teams are often an inhibitor to innovation. That's uh, some people might resonate with that. And you have to, the suggesting here, you better log in to changing your whole security approach and making it less centralized. Okay, here we are. And this is the Amazon uh, global infrastructure represented as centers. Uh, across the across the world, and they have they have the structure that they all the uh, things do. There's a big band here in the uh, northern hemisphere um, around the developed world, uh, Western America, Eastern America, UK and Europe, uh, Korea, uh, Japan, China. The green ones are new ones: Middle East, um, Singapore, uh, Scandinavia, and another one on the eastern coast. I think that's for the government. We have sort of isolated ones in um, South America and Australia uh, and in and India. So it's spread, but uh, spread in a rather concentrated fashion, reflecting the, the development of the, of the globe. Uh, Microsoft is actually pretty similar. Uh, it's actually a somewhat nicer map, real names on it, so we don't have to remember where things are. <coughs> And also a little better resolution, less proprietary, so that's good. Uh, also, Australia is on the uh, left, not the right. Um, here's India, same as before, South America, and then this band across uh, from Eastern, from uh, from China and Korea and Japan through Canada. Sorry, through the U Eastern USA with a little trip into Canada. And uh, United Kingdom and Eastern Europe. Sorry, continental Europe. And they're opening up more in China and uh, in continental Europe. Google is sort of similar. The picture has network connections on it as well. Um, uh, it has uh, 18 different zones and six regions. And um, Lots of optical fiber, of course, connecting things together, but pretty similar. Um, South America, um, Australia, Singapore, Taiwan, Tokyo, so on. Good. Here we have IBM with uh, network connections. So uh, it's actually looking pretty, and again, actually they have 55 cloud data centers. It seems to have rather more than some of the others. Maybe they're smaller. Um, and, but again, they have the same location, a little bit in South America. Uh, here they actually have one in South Africa, uh, Australia, uh, China, Korea, Japan, uh, continental Europe, United Kingdom, Canada. Western USA, um, they even have one in Boulder, um, mountainous, mountain zone USA, and the most a lot in Eastern USA. Okay, I mentioned earlier this um, important Cisco report, which has a lot of really interesting analysis I couldn't find anywhere else. And it's actually quantitative, it tells you how much network traffic is, how many virtual machines there are, which is just not possible to find out from these very secretive cloud vendors who want, do not want to tell you anything, because might, you might be able to somehow use it against them. On, I don't know quite how you compete with Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, I don't know. Anyway, here is network traffic is up by 2021 to 20 zettabytes per year. Remember, total digital data is in the 10 to, to 30 zettabytes, depending on how you measure it. And uh, this cloud traffic is quadrupling in this time period, and it's up to 92%. It's a huge fraction of the total data center traffic. And as I said, it's a little interesting because clouds are only 50% of the data center. But they're 92% of the traffic. That's because the rest of the data center is lazy and very inefficient. The clouds are. Five to ten times as efficient. 
And if we look how that network traffic decomposes, it is 71.5% inside the data center, just running around talking to each other <laughs> as they do parallel computing and then integrate themselves together. Data center to data center, 13.6%. You certainly need to integrate across data centers because a given vendor has hundreds of data centers. And then the, the, the other one is um, the data center to uh, user, 14.9% here. So, um, and the traffic is mainly from the east to the west, 85%. Okay. And they point out if we actually look at rack local traffic, it's uh, will double, uh, it will actually be twice the size of within the data center. So within the data centers between racks, so that's actually quite interesting. Uh, a while ago, 2010 or so, I did an analysis of how many servers there were in the cloud, and um, looked at in particular at the green clouds. But I really found out from this how big a cloud could be, because I could work that out from the electrical use. But I couldn't find any replacement data. Um, as we'll see in the next slide, PUE is roughly one over the efficiency. Uh, it's the total power over power used to run real computers. And that used to be three in a typical installation, 1.8 in a good data center. Clouds reduced it to 1.1 to 1.2. And nowadays, as we'll see, it's less than 1.1. And uh, there's a lot of technologies which are briefly discussed here for building new generations of data centers, which somehow exploit the fact that clouds can be more fault tolerant and have a and they, but they need to be very scalable and easy to maintain and easy to update. Whereas the classic data center was highly robust and closed and couldn't ever go anything wrong. Different trade off. Okay, folks, now we get to a recent uh, analysis I found quite interesting from Cisco, where they have this nice white paper. And it describes um, how, how big. Clouds are, although it doesn't necessarily directly address that. They introduced this sort of fancy commercial concept called a hyperscale data center and hyperscale computing, which is roughly large scale systems. Whether it's large jobs or large data centers, I think it's more the data center is large in size, it just has lots and lots of jobs. And they point out the number of such data centers growing, almost doubling from 2016 to 2021. And when they will represent 53% of all installed servers by 2021. And they will run 94% of workloads. And only 6% will go in traditional data centers, which are obviously a less important part of the infrastructure. And there, here are some um, different uh, plots. Here's the hyperscale data centers. Here we have the 338. Growing to the 628. And over here, we see how um, the, we have a difference in the number of actual instances, number of separate jobs on each node. The traditional data center is growing from 2.4 to 3.8. And here, clouds are bouncing up from 18.8 to 13.2. The virtualization allows you to pack much more on a node. That was one of the major reasons to do um, uh, cloud computing. And here we have a split between public and private cloud. So a private cloud is a, something dedicated to a particular company or uh, organization. And um, it's actually growing slower than public clouds. That's a pretty interesting prediction. It is growing, but it's um, not growing as fast. And in fact, in 2016, um, we have roughly a 58% public, 42% private. We're going to be moving to 73% public, 27% private. That's because the concerns people have had about the public clouds have largely dissipated, and their security is not viewed as seriously as before. 
and the cost advantages and efficiency advantages of pooling everything together is going to um, uh, dominate. And these, this plot here is in millions, so this is here 300 million. This is the number of uh, installed workloads and compute instances. All right, so that's pretty impressive. And uh, let's go on to the next slide here, which um, now gets some data about how we link the cloud to the edge. So I meant to have 13.7 billion uh, connections to the edge, <laughs> all over the place, crossing the globe. And um, that's dub uh, well, more than doubling since 2016. The data stored in data centers is going to go up to 1.3 zettabytes by 2021. And that's up by a factor, almost a factor of five from 2016. Um, the overall big data is 403 uh, exabytes in 2021. And that's about 30% of the total data in data centers. The actual amount of data on the edge is even larger than that of the center. You know, showing that the, the you know it's cheap distributed storage is actually going to dominate. And then the amount of data created, which is largely created on the edge, is growing to, so that it's up from uh, 218 zettabytes to 847 zettabytes in uh, 2021. So remember, we have the intelligent edge which is a distributed data grid, which means that it's a set of uh, distinct entities distributed geographically and they're in the end of data. Now the next Hi folks, uh, now we come to this uh, pretty interesting um, slide from Mary Meeker, who publishes Internet Trends every year. And uh, Right at the beginning of our Internet Trend, she had plots like this of digital data per year. And this is data shared, created and shared. And exactly how it, the definitions uh, relate to what Cisco said is not totally clear. But these are not inconsistent with what Cisco says. They're not the same, but they're not using the same definitions. Because uh, Cisco had, by 2021, a total of 850 ephemeral zettabytes. That means zettabytes that um, are largely thrown away. And then here, Mary Mika says by 2020, we'll have 47 zettabytes of shared data. So that's uh, permanent data. And 16% of that will be structured. And interestingly, the structured coefficient is growing, which is not what I would have guessed. And this amount of shared data is increasing with time. Um, and um, that, of course, is again not surprising. And um, she might be by 2021, she would have, I imagine, around 60 zettabytes. And you have to compare that with the previous numbers by Cisco, which straddle those numbers. The total number in 2021 from Cisco is much bigger than that, 850, but the amount um, stored. In the data center is a fraction, of, much a very small fraction of that. And, but they also think that five times as much data is stored on the edge as stored on the center. So there are various um, slight lack of clarity here, but the general trend is quite overwhelming. And the useful thing to remember about a, a, a zettabyte is that the terabyte per person is seven zettabytes of data. So. We're a terabyte world at the moment, because we're around here. Maybe two terabytes per person at the moment. Okay, so that's the uh, end of this uh, discussion. And of course, this graph is why we're having this class. Big data is here and we'll continue. And we gotta keep going, thank you. Okay, here we have um, the uh, <coughs> The, in numbers, the effects I've already been talking about from the five, six years, 20, 2016 to 2021. Traditional workloads and compute instances, they're just declining 5% per year. They go from 42 million down to 33 million. Whereas public and private clouds combined are going from 200, already five times bigger, to 530, which is whatever it is, 15. 
over 15 times bigger than the data center, traditional data center. This in spite of the fact that the actual sort of IT infrastructure is only 50% are in this category. That's because they're so incredibly inefficient. If we look at these totals, the total is growing 19% because cloud is up 22% and traditional down 5%. If we look at the amount of work we gain, this notes points out how efficient clouds are. Our clouds are 83% of the work in 2016 and 94% of the work in 2021. And the uh, poor old traditional workloads, of course, have correspondingly gone down from 17% to 6%. They're negligible, they're old fashioned. They're very inefficient. Of course, you still have to use them for some things we haven't worked out how to put on the cloud, but there's not so much of that. And obviously, there'll be huge pressure for this old stuff to disappear. Everything will be effectively cloud architecture. Now, because a private cloud is can be all sorts of specializations compared to a public cloud. So private clouds are pretty heterogeneous, but uh, they have key features like virtualization, which are enabling this amazing dominance of the world. Clouds are dominated, that is treacle. We're walking through the cloud treacle, and they're sucking everything up from us. Thank you. Well, well here's an amusing thing about cloud infrastructure. This Project Natic, uh, Microsoft uh, spent quite a lot of effort in, in this, seeing whether you could actually run a data center underwater, in particular in Scotland. And um, the argument for it is um, a lot of people live near the coast, so you can actually put the computers near the people. More, more probably more relevantly, the temperatures are low, so you don't have to spend so much energy cooling the equipment. And also, it's pretty pretty uh, quiet underwater. I don't think there are lots of whales and sharks where they put them. And it was one of these brilliant successes which will never be used because the infrastructure needed to implement it, that's uh, this here, is just does not exist. And so people aren't going to be moving all their data centers to the bottom of the sea. Uh, plus, although the failure rate was lower because there was no cooling problem, because it was running much cooler, um, unfortunately, if there is a failure, you can't do anything about it, because you can't send anybody down there to mend it. So the it just sort of goes down there and slowly decays. And uh, that may be not the best thing to or you want to happen. But still, it's an amusing example of, uh, of the types of things people are looking at. There was a related example where they put the, they just dumped them in a, dumped them in a field. Because again, in winter, that field is pretty cold. Here is a, actually here you can find out not only, uh, you can find out even how many computers Amazon has because um, because it claims they sell eight, they save 800 million um, a quarter, which is a 2.3 billion a year by increasing by changing the um, depreciation uh, time from three years to four years. So that well, that's one uh, that's a, that's sort of a 30% um, change, and that 30% change is 2.3 billion a year, which says that the total number of value of all the computers Amazon have at this time is whatever it is, $8 billion, something like that. And um, over here, we just have a standard plot of which uh, which public clouds have the most uh, market share with its Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Google, and Alibaba, and with this thing here being other. And other is slowly declining, that's Oracle, IBM, Tencent and all the other important players, who are actually making quite a lot of money in this area. You shouldn't be uh, too sorry for them. Okay, thank you very much. That's the end of this uh, lesson.